Our Sunday School lesson this week is the first lesson in the winter quarter. It is a lesson that will call to your memory a series of sermons that I just preached recently about knowing who you are, knowing your true identity as a child of God. Our lesson this week will also call to Mary putting God first. It will take a look at what it means to put God first in your life. No better person to teach us this lesson than Paul himself. We'll see here in the opening of our Sunday school lesson this week, there in the 12th verse that Paul, he states to the Philippians that the things which happened to him had actually turned out to the furtherance of the gospel. So what was it that had happened to Paul? Why did Paul write that to the Philippians? Well, what had happened to Paul was that Paul, he was under arrest. We find his arrest in the 21st chapter of the book of Acts. We'll see in the 21st chapter of the book of Acts down in the 28th verse that the religious leaders, they had accused Paul of teaching to Gentiles about the Lord. Not only did they accuse Paul of teaching to the Gentiles, they accused Paul of speaking against the law. We'll see there in the 21st chapter of Acts. We'll see that they said Paul spoke against the law, that he spoke against the temple, that he spoke against the people as well. They accused Paul of bringing Greeks. That again is talking about Gentiles. They accused Paul of bringing Greeks into the temple and then defiling the holy place. And so we'll see there when we take a look at the 30th verse that the religious leaders, they ended up rallying up a crowd of people within the city and they had the people run and they, in such an angry mob fashion, they apprehended Paul. And we'll see there in the 31st verse that the people, they had a desire there to kill Paul, but thankfully for Paul, there were Roman authorities that were nearby. So if we happen to end up in that position, we would say, well, things aren't going our way, right? We would say that things are, are bad for us, but this again, it shows us the kind of mindset that Paul had for him to be under arrest for no real reason. Paul, he was an innocent man. All he did was minister the good news, minister the gospel, right? He was under arrest because he ministered the Lord to the Gentiles, which the religious leaders, the Jews, they were not a fan of, they didn't like it. And so he was under arrest for no good reason. And we would think that Paul would be mad, right? We would be mad, right? If we were arrested for, for false purposes, false reasoning, right? We would be mad, we would be frustrated, we'd be upset, we'd be filled with all kind of anger, bitterness, and wrath. But here Paul is under arrest, writing to the Philippians that, hey, what has happened to me has actually worked out for the good. It has worked out for the furtherance of the gospel. Paul, he wrote a lot of the New Testament while under arrest, while in prison. And we'll see in one of my favorite verses that we find in the Bible, in the eighth chapter of Romans, in the 28th verse, that Paul, he wrote that all things work together for good to those who love God. I want you to understand that it takes a great amount of maturity in faith, knowing who you are, knowing who it is that you have faith in, knowing who it is that you serve for you to be in such a bad situation, such a bad position in life, and then be able to say, hey, even though I'm in this state, all things are working together for good because I know who my savior is. I know who my Lord is. If you have ever gone through tribulation, we start out in tribulation we can be upset with the Lord. I personally know this from, from my years of dialysis. When, when I ended up on dialysis with my, my kidneys trying to kill me, I was mad and I was frustrated and I was upset. But over the course of time, I began to accept that even though I'm in this position, that God is still my God. That God, he is in being God, in his nature, he is faithful to me and that he loves me. And that even though I'm in this position, like Paul said there in the 28th verse of the eighth chapter of Romans, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. He truly trusted in the Lord. And that's 
something that you and I as sincere believers, that is a place that, that we must get to. All of those who are of little faith, that is a place that, that they must get to as well. And those who are of no faith, hopefully, hopefully from what we see here in our lesson today, they will have a change of heart. They will have a change of mindset to be able to get to a place to where they are living in fellowship with the Lord, where they are completely trusting in the will of God. Paul's identity as a child of God, it was so evident that we see there in the 13th verse that even the whole palace guard, they were able to recognize that Paul's chains were in Christ. He was a servant of Christ. He lived with a heavenly mindset. Something that I have shared and I've spoken about this with, with my brother and I've shared this with the congregation as well. People will realize that there is something different about you and your heart and your mindset. They, through your actions, if you really are, if you have a mindset that is for the Lord, they will realize that there is something different about you. We should live as genuine believers with our hearts for the Lord and not for the world. And that's what we see Paul speak about here in our lesson this week. Paul, he said there in the 14th verse, he said that because of his faith, being bold in faith, being confident in his faith, being true to his identity as a child of God, that his fellow cohorts of the gospel, they became confident and much more bold to, to speak the word of God without fear. When you stand true to your identity as a child of God, yes, you have power. Yes, you have authority over, over yourself, over, over your life, over the choices that you make in life. But when you know who you are in your true identity, you have the power to be able to overcome the world. You have the power to be able to overcome sin. You have the power to be able to overcome the devil. So when you are going through your trials and your tribulations, you don't have to be anxious about anything. You don't have to, to worry about anything because you know where your faith will take you. Not only do we have that kind of power, no, no, not only do we have that kind of authority to, to be able to overcome and to be able to persevere, but when you know who you are in your true identity, you can be what God desires for you to be. And what is it that the Lord desires for you to be? God, he desires for all of his children to be a blessing. And when we stand in our true identity, our light, our light will shine and it will radiate and it will affect our brothers and our sisters in Christ in a great way to where they will see our boldness of faith. They will see our confidence of faith. And guess what they will do? They will, as Paul said, for his fellow cohorts of the gospel, they will be emboldened and they will grow more confident to stand firm, to stand true in their identity as a child of God. We'll see there that Paul said in the 15th verse, Paul, he wrote that some, that they preached Christ from envy and that they preached Christ from strife. Does that sound right? We'll see him say there in the 16th verse, we'll see that Paul, he noted that those that preached in such a manner, they preached from selfish ambition. They were not preaching, Paul said, they weren't preaching sincerely, not out of the sincerity of their hearts. And as you have heard me preach in recent weeks, that our faith, when we labor in our faith, we should labor from a pure heart with a good conscience and in sincere faith. That is why we see Paul say there this comparison that he has there in the 15th and, and in the 16th and in the 17th verse, where again in the comparison, Paul said the latter they preached out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. They, they ministered from a place that will produce the righteousness of God. That place again is a place of love. And that was something there that it made Paul, as he said there in the 18th verse, it caused him to rejoice. It made him well pleased. How could Paul under arrest not be so down in despair, right? He, he isn't in despair. Paul, he is hopeful. 
even though he's going through trial and he, even though he's going through tribulation, what is it that is filling with, with him with hope? What is it that is giving him confidence? We'll see there in the 21st verse that Paul, he makes a very familiar statement, a statement that all of us as sincere believers, a statement that, that we should live by. Paul, he says there in the, in the 21st verse, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. This is the mindset that gave Paul hope. It is the mindset that gave Paul confidence. This is the mindset that guided Paul through his life. What is that mindset? That mindset is the God first mindset. Paul, again, he was trusting in the Lord. His thoughts were guided by the Lord. His actions, they were guided by the Lord. Paul wasn't trying to get up and do things on his own. Paul was simply moving by faith. Faith, it calls us to wait on the Lord. Allow God to direct our path. Allow God to carry us through our trials and our tribulation. You and I as sincere believers, we are to be reliant on the Lord. We are to lean on the Lord. We are to, to depend on God. But how many of us actually do that? In this trouble that Paul was in, Paul was able to write to the Philippians there again in the 21st verse, for me to live is Christ. Again, he allowed the Lord to have rule over his life. How many of you will do that? Or will you go about saying, well, I, I don't want to lose my free will. God has no desire. As you have heard me say recently, he has no desire to take away your free will. He gave you free will. He gave all of us free will. The only thing that the Lord desires for all of us is for us to prosper, for us to grow. And in order for us to truly prosper in life, our mindset must not be worldly. Our mindset, our focus, what should guide us through life should be our dependence on God. Jesus taught that we are to love God. We are to love him over everything. And that's so difficult for, for many of us to, to come to understand because we say, well, I want to love my loved ones more than anything. But you ought to have the love that is within you, the love of God, to where a loved one, when you see them falling into error, when you see them transgressing in the Lord, you should love the Lord so much more that you can correct your loved one. You should love the Lord over everything to where, again, rather than to falling into temptation because you love the world, you love the riches of the world, you should love the Lord so much more that you will commit yourself to heeding his rebuke when he rebukes you. Paul had to do that in his life. He had to confront himself on the road to Damascus when, when the Lord rebuked him. And when he confronted himself and when he seen the error of his way, he was able to live with a mindset to put God first. To live, Paul said, is Christ. We should live with that mindset as well. To where well, rather than laying up our treasures in the world, we lay up our treasures with the Lord. We lay up our treasures in heaven, which Jesus again encouraged us to do. Now, as we, as we move on here in our lesson, we'll see Paul, he goes on to state there in the 23rd verse that he was hard pressed between two desires. He's keeping it real with us here in the 23rd verse. The two desires that he had was to remain in the world, to be with those who he desired to minister to. Again, for Paul to live was to Christ. And so he desired, he had a desire to remain in the world and to help those who were in need of help, those who needed to hear the word of God. But Paul, he, he loved ministering the word of God. Again, for him to live was Christ. And, and that's what he desired to be able to live for. But he also said there in the 23rd verse that he also had a desire to go home to be with the Lord. He had a desire to go home, to, to live with the Lord, to dwell in glory. Again, being in the heavenly kingdom is far better 
than being in this world. Certainly Paul, he, he enjoyed life. He enjoyed being able to minister the word of God. But again, he had a mindset that was for the Lord and for the heavenly kingdom. So again, not knowing what awaited him on, on the journey, he would have been fine to, to continue to live on and to be able to minister the word of God. But if it was time for him to leave this world and to go and be with God, he was happy to do that as well. How many of us live with that kind of mindset to where again, our mind is for being with God. There are many who desire to make earth heaven. You really think that this sinful world, this world that we're always talking about is getting worse and worse. You really think that this place can be heaven? No, as much as I love being with my loved ones, as much as I love being able to speak with them, being able to laugh with them, I'm telling you right now that I have a, a heart that's for heaven. And I know that when I get there, I'm going to have eternal contentment. I'm going to be filled with peace and, and I'm going to rejoice all over in God's heaven. And I desire to do that with all of you today as well. Will you live with that kind of mindset? We'll see there in the 25th verse there that Paul, he said that he had been, uh, had he been set free from his arrest, that he was ready to continue to minister the gospel. We'll see there in the, in the 25th and in the 26th verse there that Paul, he had a desire to, to visit those in Philippi to again, to minister among them. He desired to be able to rejoice with them to be there with them more abundantly in Christ. Paul, he was a, a workhorse for Christ. And the thing about it was that, that he did not labor mechanically as, as many of us do today, where we, where we labor for the Lord out of religion. We go to church out of religion, not because we have a genuine desire to go to church, but we do it out of mechanical religion. Many of us go to, to Bible study. We show up to Sunday school or we watch online mechanically out of religion. But Paul, he had a true desire for the Lord. And, and that's something that, that, that I want for you as well, to, to break away from the mechanical of religion and to grow to have a mindset where again, in your mind to live you live for Christ, not for selfish ambitions, not to gain the riches of this world, but to gain the riches of the heavenly kingdom. That's, that's what we should live for. And, and if we live in that manner, then we will move in a manner that Paul moved in to where we love the Lord. And in that love, we love our neighbors as we love ourselves. We will testify of God to somebody. We will testify of God's love, his mercy, and his salvation. We will testify of that to somebody. That's something that we should take away from our lesson today. When we live for the riches of this world, we are living out of selfish ambition to where just ourselves. We are the only ones that grow. It may be those who we like, but the rest, all of those that are around us, we will move in a manner of bitterness towards them and in a manner of apathy, which you have heard me speak of recently as well. That's how we will move. And, and that's the kind of world essentially that, that it seems like we live in today where people are more so out for themselves rather than being out and caring for those that are around them. When you have a God first mindset, your mindset will will be converted. It will change from that selfish mindset, a mindset that moves out of envy and strife, which Paul touched on today, to a mindset to where you move out of compassion. You move out of love for, for all of those that are around you. That is what God wants you to move with. A mindset that is, again, a mindset that is of love. Again, we are to, to have a mindset that is for God. And again, something that we can take away from our lesson today as well is that we don't have to be anxious for anything. When our heart is for the Lord, we must learn to trust in the will of God. And you will see me say that in a Bible study that is coming up as well. We must learn to trust in the Lord 
we must learn to grow in our fellowship with him. So that again requires us to have a change of heart, to have a change of mindset, to where our mindset, our heart is not for the world, our mindset and our heart is for the Lord. Will you do that today? Again, I certainly encourage, I urge, and I hope that you will. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. Now, if you haven't done so already, I ask all of you to, to follow our channel. Be sure that you follow this channel so that you don't miss a Sunday School lesson, so that you don't miss a Bible study, so that you don't miss a sermon or a food for thought. Be sure that you are following this channel today.